And now we're going to final preparations where we're going to create a basic layout, directory layout for the new system. So if we look at the LFS uh, root drive, so again, this is a good way of testing the LFS environment where we can see it's very basic. There's the boot directory we created, which we mounted the boot um, partition on. Lost and found you get by default when you create a new partition and the sources directory. This is where we've been currently downloading all the patches. So this command here is going to add in a few more basic um, directories for the system. And you can see there now what it's created. These extra ones here and some sim links as well. Next we create a tools directory which is for the temporary tool stage. And you can see that's been created. And there it is there appeared just below sources. Now we're going to create an LFS user. This probably doesn't matter as much as it would do normally if you're building on a, a real machine where you've got um, maybe a live environment you might be working on. This is just more a protection against doing something um, that might affect the host system um, but it's good to just follow the book anyway even though we're in like a protected environment and inside a virtual box so what we're going to do is to add a user uh, sorry add a group for lfs and then add a new user called lfs as well with some parameters so if you are on a live system or a real system but bear in mind that you are modifying the um, your, your host system by adding this user and there's one or two other commands as you go throughout the book that do actually modify the host system in a small way. Now we'll set a password for the LFS user so we can log in with it and then we give full ownership to various directories to the LFS user. So you can see some of these ETC, the tools the user, the LFS have got and lib64 have got um, have been given access to the LFS and you can see it's read, write and execute as well. Now we're going to become the LFS user and set up an environment for it that's uh, useful for building Linux from scratch. The first one we can do is to create a bash profile and this will set up the prompt and also a bash RC as well. And there's some explanations there of what the commands do. And what I'm going to do next is to modify the bash RC. So I'm going to do VI and I'll just copy this actually. And I'm going to add in something called make flags, which will tell GCC to use multiple cores. And if you remember, I'm using 24 cores. So I type in minus J24. If you want to use four cores, it will just be minus J4. And I'll save that. <clears throat> so now if I display this, you can see I've got that extra make flags environment variable added in to allow multiple calls to be used while comp compiling. It says here several commercial distributions add an undocumented instantiation of etc bash dot bash rc to the initialization of bash and this as this file has the potential to modify the users lfs users environment in ways that can affect the building of critical lfs packages so to make sure the lfs environment is clean it says to run this but bear in mind like i say this does affect the host system it modifies the host system so i'm going to become root to do this in gen 2 it doesn't actually do anything if this would do something it would print something up on the screen because uh, it moves a file or renames a file 
with the V option, but as you can see, there's no output. So with Gen 2, it's not necessary to run this. It's not, there's not a problem with Gen 2. Um, but if you are using another distribution, bear in mind that if that printed up something, you might want to revert the change after you've built LFS. Um, in fact, it's after the LFS user is no longer needed, which is at the beginning of chapter 7, so it's something to bear in mind. So I'll become the LFS user again. Because I've come out of LFS and gone back in, I don't really need to run this source bash profile, but if you do want to run it, it's no harm. If you haven't come out of root to run that command, then you do need to run it. And you can prove that it's been run by echoing, for example, make flags. And that proves that it's read that file and that the environment is correct. Next is a bit about something called SBUs, which are standard build units. Um, and it's basically uh, a method to gauge how long packages take to build. It's not completely accurate. It's only a guide. It depends on many factors, um, how many cores you're building with, the speed of your disk, your memory subsystem, the type of process you've got, what generation it is, and so on and so on. Um, so it is purely a guide. It will give you a guide as to whether it's going to take a few minutes as opposed to a few hours for a package to build. It's that kind of thing. It's not going to say, you know, if this one was uh, two SBUs, it will definitely be twice as fast as one with one SBU. It's not quite like that. It's not that accurate. But it, it as it does say here, it does. It is an approximation. Um, that that is all it is. Um, the LFS book is quite accurate in their estimates now. It used to be a bit all over the place, but um, I think they've taken some care to keep them updated. With the BLFS book, they're not so accurate. There are some that are wildly um, wrong or they've not been updated or maybe they've been measured incorrectly. Um, so that's something to bear in mind if you go on to BLFS that, yeah, some of them aren't completely accurate, but certainly as far as the LFS is concerned um, they're, they're pretty good test suites are something about test suites there uh, as I mentioned in the introduction it's really vital especially the tool chain that the, the tests are run for that to get an idea that you've got a core um, system that's capable of building packages reliably um, if you don't run the test then you've got absolutely no idea of whether what you're building is good quality code or not. Um, whereas if you run tests, even if you do get one or two errors, uh, you've got a pretty good idea that you've got a good stable system. If you're getting hundreds or thousands of errors, then no, you've probably got a system there's something wrong with it. Um, but again, you'd only know that by running the test. So I don't advise skipping the tests, especially so if you, you're new to LFS, because it will give you an indication of a breakage. Um, rather than finding out much further down the line uh, when you've done a lot of work. 